Hi friends and uh, welcome to this session. So today we'll be discussing regarding tension band wiring of electron on. This is a very simple surgery, but what mistakes do most of us make now? This is based on an uh, article which was published. I will go through that also. So the errors that we do during uh, performing a tension band wire electron on. Now, I mean, many of the centers, because of these mistakes or errors that happen and because of the complications that happen, many have switched over to a plate, right? Same principle, but with a plate because the errors are much lesser. And now with the fixed angle screws in the locking plates, so uh, it becomes much easier also. But having said that, our country especially is uh, very um, uh, prone for economic constraints of the patients. So compare a plate versus a tension band. In tension band, all we that we require is two K wires and one um, SS wire loop, which all put together will come in less than 100 rupees. But plate, no matter which company we use, it will at least be four to 5,000 along with the screws, right? So that's a difference more than about 50 times. So 100 rupees versus 5,000. So uh, although both of them work on same principles and the end result should be the same. So that's why we need to uh, perfect the art of doing a good tension band wiring of all the non patella and uh, other other areas where we can uh, make do with tension band uh, principle right so let us just go through that uh, simple things we all know the theory behind tension band principle have been through this multiple times the prerequisite should be that number one it should be a simple fracture pattern preferably a transverse fracture pattern but almost all cases, it will not be a pure transverse. There will be little obliquity, but that is still okay as long as it is a simple transverse, simple fracture pattern. Uh, but more importantly, the medial cortex, that is the opposite cortex, should not be communicated. Okay? So this is where many of us make a mistake of not analyzing the uh, X-rays properly. And uh, many of the time, the X-rays do not are not taken the prop necessary view. So even intraoperatively, if we realize that the opposite cortex is communicated, it is worthwhile to abandon this for some other uh, ways of fixing uh, the fracture, right? So it is not that hard and fast tool that if we plan to do tension band wiring, we need to end with tension band wiring. So it, uh, this works on a very simple principle of converting tensile forces to compressile forces. Now, all this will only be possible if it's a simple fracture pattern, okay? So we should not try to extrapolate the indications to other fracture patterns. That is where we run up with complications more often than not, okay? So let us go through the steps. The steps are very simple. Uh, can be done uh, with the patient in lateral position or supine, depending on the surgeon's choice. So this is uh, uh, supine with uh, hand on the chest. Okay, so we can expose and reduce and fix. Whereas this is the lateral position where the arm and the elbow is get kept at 90 degrees over a bolster or a pillow, and uh, we can make the necessary posture incision. So these are the two. Uh, ways to position of the patient, both of them uh, have its own advantages and disadvantages, okay? The incision is again a uh, posterior incision, so we can mark the fractured olecranon and that is the shaft of ulna, so it will be usually be a gap which is felt, especially on when we flex the elbow because the triceps pulls the proximal fragment away. So we can take a midline incision along the olecranon on the shaft of the ulna, okay? So that that should be the that will be the incision. Once we once we incise, we straight off uh, more or less reach the fractured bone. Okay, we need to slightly uh, uh, dissect the triceps uh, to reach the bone, and then we need to clear this entire area of the hematoma and visualize the far cortex at this point of time. Right, this is the right time to see if the number one the status of cartilage, because many of times it can have an impacted fracture. Uh, of the articular cartilage, which requires uh, maneuvers to put it back in place, or it can be comminuted. So in which case we need to switch over to some other form of treatment. Okay. So once we clear off the hematoma, we can expose and actually visualize both ends of the fracture on the medial side and uh, verify that it is a simple fracture pattern. Okay. Once we do that, we need to provisionally reduce it under vision. Okay. The best technique to do that would be using a point reduction clamp. Now, on putting on the top end, it is much easier because it won't slip. But when you try to insert it on the bottom end, it usually slips. So it is much better to maybe make a small drill hole on both sides and put reduction clamps. Again, uh, much recommended to use reduction clamps on both sides rather than only one side because when you use on only one side, maybe it will compress this side and open the other side. Okay? 
So that is also one of the common errors that we do. So best will be to put point reduction clamps on both sides, make small drill holes so that it, the pointed clamp doesn't slip off when you try to compress the, uh, reduce the fracture and compress it. Okay. Once that is done, the next most, one of the most crucial step will be to take an entry point in the bone for passing the SS wire. Okay. Now, where do we take this entry? Now, that is a very, very specific point. We take about 4 cm distal to the fracture. And on the, on the width of the bone, it is about 2 third, 1 third or about 5 mm from the dorsal cortex. Okay. So, 4 cm from the fracture and here in the width, 2 third, 1 third roughly or about 5 mm from the dorsal cortex is where is the entry point for the drill bit to make a transverse hole so that we can pass the wire loop. So don't make mistakes of getting the wire loop too close to the fracture or too far away from the fracture. Okay, if it's too close or too far also, there will not be adequate tensioning uh, that is possible. So once we do that, then uh, the recommended things is what I'm going to show. So, so point reduction clamps on both sides and then this is the entry hole. Take a wire loop. In the wire loop, also about two thirds and one thirds, create a loop, right? Just twist it around itself, creating a loop. That's where it is. So this this side is two third and this side is one third, and then slightly bend it so that there is a nice, nice tiny loop. So now we have one short end of the loop and one long end. Put the short end of the loop through the hole going out. That's the short end of the loop, and we can see that the uh, loop that we have created is here. Once we have done that, so we can pass this side, which is the bigger side, go across and come. Meanwhile, pass two K wires, 1.6 millimeter K wires. Now we always have to use this angle guide. Why? Because if we do not use, maybe we will not end up with parallel K wires. Now tension band principle, we need the wires to be parallel. Okay. So start somewhere at the tip, I mean, uh, uh, triceps fibrosity and pass it coming out along the anterior cortex. So we don't need to go in so far. So in saw bone, it always happens that we will not be able to uh, make the resistance, but in real life, we will be able to feel the loss of resistance. That's when we can stop. Once we do that, we can actually come out about a centimeter because at the end, we'll be impacting it about a centimeter. So get it back about a centimeter and finally impact it. Once you have passed one wire, the second wire should be parallel. So use this angle guide that will ensure that the wires are parallel to each other. Okay. So again, in the same direction. So once you have pierced the anterior cortex, we can come out about a centimeter. So two parallel K wires, about 1.6 millimeters. These are cut. And then the loop, the, the bigger end of the loop is taken in a figure of eight behind the wires, then in front of the wire and coming on the other side and this small segment of the wire is bought at the same level. Now, mind you, when you are doing a dual knot technique of tension band, both the knots should come more or less at the same level, right? We can't have one knot here and one knot here. So twist the first couple of turns uh, manually so that there is an even turning and then cut off the excess wire, excess loop of uh, wire that is there. So this is the recommended technique of dual knot. Now, both the sides is tension, the same thing. Remember, but this is done one after the other in the sense, couple of turns on one side, then couple of turns on the other side. But remember that both of them do in the same direction. For example, if this surgeon is doing it on clockwise, then this surgeon should be doing it anti-clockwise so that both of them go in the same direction, not opposite to each other. Okay. And the twisting, the technique is always pull and turn. So it's it's pull and turn, not just keep turning at the same time. Okay, that gives it adequate tensioning. So a couple of turns on both sides, either sides alternately can be done, but in the same direction, uh, which 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 both of them should be following. So then once evenly it is knotted, we can cut off the excess uh, loop on both sides 